Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is Mikey from Rockin' K. And if you don't know who we are, we are a couple of Americans who transplanted to Germany. Yes, Germany. And we're doing some homesteading. And homesteading involves equipment. And man, we've been going crazy on equipment lately. Um, not all homesteading requires this equipment, but this is the equipment that I got because of the way we're doing our homesteading. All right, y'all, so you'll have to excuse me. It is, we got it, got this light, real light mist coming down right now. But um, one of the key, key, key things um, when, you're, when you're doing homesteading is to be able to move stuff and dig stuff and, you know, because you're trying to build things and things are heavy and dirt needs to be moved. And so one of the things I needed like first and foremost was a tractor so i opted for a compact so most people are like oh the compact tractor is you know too small um can't do much with it this thing has done anything and everything that i've put towards it now granted there are some jobs that this thing just can't do i mean it's a little tractor right so it is a solus 26 so 26 meaning 26 horsepower it has a three-cylinder Mitsubishi motor in it. She's got plenty of power, plenty of for what I need to do. First and foremost, what was key is, if you look, there's a door back there, right? That door is small. If you look, that's the garage doors are small. My barns are small. If I go and buy a 50 horsepower, 70 horsepower, 80 horsepower tractor, first off, it's not getting in there not never going to happen and you know yeah it'll fit in this in these big barn doors but my lower barn it's not going to fit my lower barn the door is is just too short so this met my needs and i'll tell you what it's more than surpassed my needs it has helped out phenomenally and uh, you know on various videos you, <clears throat> you hear me say yeah we're going to go get more equipment we're going to go get more equipment well We've been buying equipment galore. So the first piece was the tractor. The tractor I got mm, a little more than a year ago, something like that. Uh, I can look here on the on the registration. So no, it, it's been it's been one year. So I've had the tractor a year. We've managed to put 96 hours on it. I think it is in the year. Um, it started out we didn't use it so much because we didn't have the equipment, but now we have equipment, and I'll tell you what. I went from the 50 hour from the 50 hour service to the 96 in less than in like a month. It, it was it was crazy. But so that was the, the first piece of equipment. I'm going to be pulling the equipment out because I need to rearrange everything. So as I pull the equipment out, I'm going to have it on the tractor. I'm going to have it out here and I'll talk about each piece. So one of the first attachments I actually got, you know, really, if we go all the way back, was the front loader. So the tractor comes without a front loader and you can get the Solus front loader, but the Solus front loader, while it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. And if it's a Summit, um, the Summit loader, it's, it's a Solus loader. So Summit, Solus, same tractor. I went for the, for the Allo Quickie because of its lifting capacity is much, much more. Um, well, not much more, but like 100 kilos more. So that 220 pounds is 220 pounds, right? So that's why I went with, with that one. So one of the other reasons I want the Allo versus the Solus or the Summit or, you know, the, the tractor manufacturer brand is, is basically what I'm getting at, is it came with a different set of controls. So I have this joystick that sits right here. And 
The joystick is a little finer of a control, although my controls are really fast right now and I'm working that out. I have to put a regulation valve with a knob on it to slow the drop down. It picks up just fine, but when you release pressure and stuff, man, she'll drop. And I mean drop, drop, like bam. So with that said, got to put a regulator valve to slow the flow out down. But hey, right, Nothing, nothing's going to be perfect. It's going to be good, not necessarily perfect. But I love I loved that loader. It fits the tractor, it came with a kit that adapted it all, and I mean, it was bolt, plug and play, really easy. I had to tap the hydraulics on the bottom for the actual tractor, but it's set up for that, it's already made for that. Then of course, the other attachment that's the must is the pallet forks. So I got those um, with the loader. And then my first real piece of attachment that fit on the three point was this and if you've watched my firewood video you saw me putting the firewood in this and bundling it up um this thing it it makes doing firewood so much easier then here on the homestead we decided we were going to start cutting hay and we're cutting hay for two reasons number one for sale number two for uh livestock our own livestock. We don't have livestock yet, but that's in the works. But it's twofold. If I can sell the hay and, you know, pay for the equipment as well as use the hay for feeding our own livestock, you know, you can turn, you can turn grass and hay into meat, right? So there's, some people don't like that, but that's, that's the way it works, you know? So um if you're going to eat meat which you know i mean it's protein so yeah you gotta some people might not agree but so anyway we started our haying and the first piece i had to get for the haying was the cutter so i bought this cutter used um it is a meter 35 cutter and believe it or not, it works out perfect for this tractor. Because if you look, when it cuts it, it lays it right down in the middle of the cutter because the cutter has, and we'll give you a peek behind the curtain. The cutter has those two drums on it with those knives. And if you see, there's that gap between the two drums. That's where the it lays the grass down. The grass ends up laying right here in the middle. What's perfect is the wheelbase of the tractor and the and the, the width of the cutter when i cut my next row i'm i'm moving over and the wheels are on either side of that last cut it works perfect but i picked that up used um, from a gentleman that was doing the same he's doing what i want to do he was doing the home setting thing and um as you saw in another video uh, i mentioned it and he basically retired from that way of life. With that said, I bought it from him. Um, I think I paid a thousand for it. So that cutter new goes for two and a half times that minimum, so, see, depending upon who's selling it, three times that. So I got a deal and hey, there's nothing wrong with used equipment, especially when we're talking about stuff like that. It runs off the PTO. The PTO comes back. It turns this belt. The belt goes up to a, to a gearbox that spins the two drums, counter, counter directions. So one drum spins one way and the other drum spins the other way. But that's the first step in cutting hay is cutting, right? Making hay, I should say, is cutting it. So we got that cutter. All right, so it was one of the first pieces of equipment that I bought but it was the last piece of equipment to make it here to the, uh, the homestead because of delivery times and all that. You can hear the tractor running in the background. That's because I want to show you one of the neat functions that it actually has, but that was the, the mulcher. So they call it a mulcher here. They call it a flare mower in the States. Uh, it's for mowing tall grass. And I got the one 
if you can see with the hammers, what they call hammers. That lets me mow down stuff like as thick as your thumb with no sweat all the way up to like almost two inches and it'll just eat it up and spit it out the back here in a little wood chips so that's i mean that's why they call it a mulcher so at least here in germany but the specific so i could have gotten a mulcher and i could have spent uh, i don't know a thousand dollars and got a mulcher but the reason for the mulcher is after we cut the field we got to cut around trees and along fences and stuff where you can't really get with the with the drum mower for cutting hay and you can't really get to it with um, the the tether when you're when you're sweeping that sweeping the cut grass into wind excuse me into windrows so this actually shifts to where it's sticking out past the tractor and I can cut along the fences and then I can put it right back behind the tractor or then some so it goes from there and it'll actually slide itself all the way to there so it's kind of neat it allows me to cut you know farther on the right side um, this way I can get up close to the fences in the, in the field and be able to make it look pretty without having to go crazy with a weed whacker and, and all that. Um, also, I ended up with a custom cut job, like no kidding, the weekend after I got it, somebody had a field that they needed cleared um, because it was all overgrown with uh, stinging nettle and little saplings and all kinds of stuff like that and they needed to get in there, so they needed me cut, cut paths. So right away, I mean, I got a return on it, basically, from doing a custom cut. And yeah, I spent, I don't know, uh, an hour out there, if that. And, you know, it netted, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of goodwill and, and stuff like that because I really didn't charge him anything except to get fuel back into the tractor. And I ran through, I don't know, like four or five liters because I had to drive out there. Um, but it's just because the tractor is really efficient. But that was like the first thing I bought, but the last thing to show up. So. All right, so before the next piece of equipment, so we bought the wood bundler. And I believe I bought, I bought and paid for the wood bundler after the mulcher. But the wood bundler was the first one to show up. Then the drum cutter that I went and picked up uh, north of here. And then I went to another small agricultural place that was maybe like an hour-ish away. And I picked up a band rake. So sounds what it, what it is. There's two belts here. And there's a third belt there. So that third belt, the PTO, drives off the tractor, comes back to that belt. That belt goes over to there, and then it turns all the rest. So you can see the hay rakes, and what it does is these things go round and round, and you can adjust the height and everything, and it throws the hay this way. So right now the flag is on it, what I call the flag, but it's a uh, hay stop. So what happens is as you're, as you're tedding the hay, this isn't on there. So it's able to just throw it across the field. Then when you're ready to row it up, you put this on and what happens is it throws the hay, it hits here and drops and give, gives you that nice wind row to run your baler and pick up the hay. So this is like the simplest of machines. Uh, it's all belts, there is no gears, there's no, all the bearings on these uh, pulleys are all sealed bearings. You don't even grease it. So when it comes to like the easiest machine that I that I have right now, uh, aside from the baler, because the baler has, it's not even a machine. It just tips over and tips back. But this having moving parts and all that, it's the, it's the easiest, simplest machine. 
And I was told by the Germans here that this is the old way of doing it before they went to the, the spinning like spider stars of doing hay that they used to use these. And that was the way that the old timers did it. But like I said, this was the, the second piece of hay equipment. It was technically the third piece of equipment on the farm um, because, you know, not counting the tractor, of course, behind me. But when it came to stuff to attach to the tractor, it was the third piece. So I got the wood, but you know, the wood baler, you know, the bundler. Then I got the um, hay cutter, and then I got this hay rake, and it's neat, you know. Um, I am getting a different style to do the tedding, to do the spreading out of the hay for drying, only because this, while it works, it, it done. Don't get me wrong, it does the job but it doesn't do the job perfect. And, and uh, one of the star style, you know, spinny ones will throw the hay out a little bit better for it to dry. And that's what it's about. It's about getting it dry as fast as possible because like, <laughs> come on, it's, it's been raining all the time here. It's, it's very unusual, but it's been raining and you can see it, the humidity is really high. It's not even temperature, it's the humidity here. So, but that was the, you know, the hay rake and that was, the second piece of hay equipment and the third piece of equipment to hit the farm. Um, then the most expensive and complex one was the next one that I, that I ended up picking up. And that one I had to drive two hours for. So let me go get rid of this, set this aside so I can go get that into the next piece. All right, so rounding up this, this uh, equipment is going to be the baler. Now, if you've seen the, um, the hay baling video, which was last week's video, um, you saw this in action. It's the most expensive piece next to the tractor, but it's, it's great. It works great. Um, I was talking to a fellow farmer uh, last night. He's looking at one because he does, he has a big round baler, but he also caters to people that can't really handle a, the large round bales. So he's thinking about getting one. Um, so I have a feeling I'm gonna have some custom baling coming up in my future where I'm going over to do his field, but I don't know yet. But like I said, this is the baler. Um, I use sisal twine or natural twine. Uh, most of the guys here, they use um, poly, uh, poly string. And I would rather have something that, you know, is biodegradable. Um, if the animals eat it, it's not going to cause a, a big problem. I mean, they shouldn't eat it to begin with, but, but it's cool. It runs off the PTO. It is the heaviest piece I have. But what's funny is, even though it's the heaviest, it's the, it's the easiest on the tractor when it comes to PTO and stuff like that. The hardest on the tractor, in, in all honesty, is that hay cutter getting the drums spinning once they're spinning you're golden but getting those drums spinning takes a lot of horsepower and i know guys that are running uh 175s on 25 horsepower um that is a 135 that we're running on 26 horsepower um and don't get me wrong the mulcher because the mulcher has a lot of weight to the to the hammers and the cutter once it's spinning thing spins forever so, you know, you start spinning it in neutral and then go about your cutting. So, but, you know, heaviest piece of equipment is, is by far this baler at more than a thousand pounds. Um, I don't know the specific weight, but I know it came in that metal frame right there. And we put it in the back of that truck and yeah, she was heavy. I had to drive uh, a couple hours up to, uh, I think it was Dortmund. I think Dortmund, uh, way up north, S and SK Agrigar up north to pick up this, this, uh, baler, but now I can do my own bales. So that, that rounds up like the equipment that we've been stacking up. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, which is one of the early pieces of equipment was that grapple. They call it a griff shuffle here. Uh, it was, it was one of the first pieces that was just phenomenal and I'm going to flip you around. 
yeah, so let's get this tractor started. All right, now we have the tractor running, so it's kind of noisy. But let me flip you around. And so the shovel opens up with this control. I have a, a button that was an add-on for this system. And then when you tip it, it does its thing. So if you look at the shovel, Yeah, yeah, you can get destructive with that. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, um, if you go through, you'll see me using it on all kinds of shit, stuff, grabbing um, uh, brush or pieces of chicken coop. When we destroyed the chicken coop, I was able to grab the pieces and, and just kind of shred them up. But the nice thing is now, for the most part, my workshop is mostly empty. <clears throat> which was what I was trying to do all, all along today. And I figured while I was emptying it out, I'm going to show you some of my equipment because I keep saying, oh, I got to go pick up equipment. Oh, I got to go pick up equipment. Well, that's the equipment I picked up. So the baler, this, of course, I got when I got the tractor. The hay rake, pallet forks, bundler, mulcher slash flare mower whatever you want to call it and the hay cutter the drum the drum cutter it, it's not cheap but this all makes money and you put it to use you make your money it pays for itself eventually it's going to take a little while but even the baler it's all going to pay for itself and and it gives me self-sufficiency where I have the ability to cut my, my own hay. I have the ability to take care of my fields. I have the ability to heat my house and bundle my firewood. And that's what homesteading is all about. Homesteading isn't about, you know, going from nothing to something. Um, I'm in the process of going from on the grid and, and using other people's resources to using my own resources. Um, and that's where it kind of differs for me, I guess. Um, I'm going from on-grid to having solar. But that's, I mean, I'm doing a little different, doing a little backwards, uh, kind of getting back to nature. But I'll know where my food's coming from. Um, I'll, I'll have that self-sufficiency. I'll have heat when the power when the power's out because I have solar and batteries that will power my pumps for days to move the water around for my 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 wood boiler the batteries will last days and days the batteries they're they're, on, on the, they're right there behind me I haven't still haven't put them in but they'll last days and days and days where i could we, we could be without electricity and i'll have heat in my house <clears throat> i'll have hot water in my shower yeah go figure right i'll have it'll all be it'll just be there right and to me, that's kind of what the homesteading thing is, is not going from nothing to something, and, but going, for me, going to self-sufficiency and making it where I grow my own food. I, you know, cut, cut my own hay. I use firewood to make my, my heat. So yeah, that's a glimpse into what we, we've been doing here and how it's been kind of a whirlwind of a spring and, you know, bleeding a lot of money trying to get it, you know, squared away. But now that we're squared away, um, I shouldn't be spending money on homestead stuff for a long time. So, you know, thanks for watching. If you haven't, please subscribe. Um, I know the content has uh, been sporadic and has been here or there. Um, and that's because we've been busy. We've been cutting hay. Um, I got other things in the works and I've been actually doing a lot of filming, um, but I can't release it just yet. It's not ready to be released. Um, you'll figure out why um, when it finally does get released. You'll see um, all of that. And um, thanks for watching again. And yeah, you know my motto. If you're thinking about family, you're thinking about friends, give them the what's up or the what's that. Reach out to them. You know you'd love to hear from them too. And until the next installment, Avi Rezaid.